Hey boaters, we're here aboard Jim Hendrix's 216 Cabo Cuddycon called Split Decision. And today we're going to take a look at doing an installation of the new Cytex SP120C Autopilot. Actually, uh, Jim, who's the electronics editor for Saltwater Sportsman and Boating Magazine, has been running a Cytex SP110 Autopilot aboard this boat for about eight years now but we're gonna to upgrade to the new SP120C. This unit actually fits in the same compact uh, hole because it's got the same four inch by four inch uh, control head, uh, but it offers some new features. Uh, it's got a new nine axis rate compass and new software that adds some new functionality and things you can do with it when you're out on the water. So let's take a look at this process and do this installation. Pick a dry location forward in the boat, close to the boat's center line as possible, and low as possible in the hull to minimize effects of roll and pitch. And keep it away from large metal objects or magnets. On Jim's boat, we selected an interior storage locker and fashioned a flat horizontal surface. Mount it aligned with the center line with the arrow pointed towards the bow. Connect the SP120C head unit to power, then connect the rate compass and rudder in pits to the back of the unit either an actual rudder feedback unit or output from a GPS for virtual rudder feedback. Since we were replacing an SP110 autopilot, we already had the right sized hole in the console. With its compact and waterproof control head measuring roughly 4x4 four four inches, you can find space for this rugged autopilot on just about any size or style of boat. We're using an Octopus hydraulic autopilot drive on this boat. Since we were replacing an earlier system, we already had the hoses in place and the mounting location chosen. An interior locker across from the gyro compass. Connect the three hoses to the proper ports, finger tight, then snug the fittings down with a wrench. Make the electrical connections using marine heat shrink connectors to ensure solid contact and to prevent corrosion. Now mount the autopilot drive to the boat. Power up the autopilot and check to make sure the compass is operating properly. Jim likes to keep his boat clean, so we first laid down a protective layer of paper to catch any drips. Add steering fluid to the helm moving the wheel back and forth to draw in fluid. When you're able to build up pressure and turn the motor hard over, have your partner crack the bleeder valve on the steering cylinder and watch and listen for escaping air. Keep an eye on the fluid level and the funnel and hose. Don't let all the fluid drain down, or you might suck more air into the system that will have to be purged. Turn hard over to starboard and crack the bleeder on the starboard side while maintaining pressure on the wheel. Then turn the motor hard over to port and crack the port side bleeder. Repeat this process until you are able to crack the valve on both sides and only have clear fluid escape. Purging air from the system in this way is a very important step. While holding the wheel hard over to one side, energize the pump by powering up the autopilot. Use the port or starboard arrows on the autopilot control head to move the outboard in the opposite direction using the autopilot drive. Move the motor back and forth with the autopilot until it moves smoothly across its full steering arc in both directions. Not taking any more fluid. <laughs> Drain as much steering fluid as you can out of the funnel and hose into a container before you disconnect it from the helm. But no, some is always going to leak out. Clean up those inevitable drips and replace the helm filler cap. You ready? Yeah. 
Move the motor back and forth using both manual steering and the autopilot to make sure everything works smoothly. After a quick on the water calibration, you'll be ready to enjoy your Cytex SB120C for cruising and fishing. Watch for an on water review of the new Cytex SP120C autopilot in the near future. And to learn more, contact the experts at the GPS store.